I'm so excited to share this morning with you as we complete our collaboration together. I have a few things to talk about before we get to that, but first of all, I just wanna check in, see how everyone's doing, and most importantly, I want you to tell me what you're having for brunch. I've seen a few comments already. I made myself um, an iced mocha this morning. It's actually half almond milk and a little hint of chocolate. I was going to go with my sweet and savory votes from yesterday, but I decided that it might be kind of hard to be noshing on something um, and read pages. So I'll save the delicious brunches for you. I also have to say that I happen to have a teenager in the house, which means that any breakfast treats that appear um, are vanished and disappear quite quickly. A dark chocolate chip lemon glaze scone. Oh my goodness, this is so delicious. Hi, Charissa, thanks for being here. Lemon cookie, that's, that's fair. Lemon cookies I'm down with, especially if you're taking a quick lunch break. Everybody sounds like you're having such deliciousness. Uh, Sharon Redgrave, who's been participating, and I know many of you have all like become reader, writer friends here through this process, sent in a picture of her delicious brunch earlier. I mean, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> and champagne. I mean, I feel like this project that we've done definitely calls for champagne if you're a bubbly drinker at all, absolutely. <laughs> All right, uh, before we get started, I wanted to chat just briefly about the fact that today is Juneteenth. And I have to tell you that prior to moving to Ashland about three years ago, I, I was aware of Juneteenth. If you're not familiar yourself, it is the celebration of signing the Emancipation Proclamation and ending slavery in the United States, which is huge and something we should all celebrate, I believe, and something we should also reflect and learn on. But I have to tell you that it wasn't until I moved to Ashland that I realized that there are parties and celebrations and barbecues and music and Ashland and OSF in particular has led the way. Um, and I've always participated. And this year, well, that's going digital. So if you're interested in learning more, I highly encourage you to pop over to Oregon Shakespeare's social page today. They're sharing all kinds of wonderful stuff in celebration of the day. And it's also kind of a way to get another taste of the Ashland, the fictional Ashland that I describe. You get to see that real Ashland. Oh, you didn't know about it either? until you moved to Ashland. I know, isn't that amazing? Like, oh, thank you for helping enlighten us. It's just another way that I love this community and the Rogue Valley. And I talk about this a lot in the Bake Shop series, but uh, or the Oregon Shakespeare Festival is so important in terms of trying to expand its reach and expand what theater means to all people. So it's been, it's been amazing for me to be able to have a tiny taste of that and have more of that living here now. Okay, oh, I'm glad you put it on your calendar. That's awesome. Oh, Google put it on your calendar, right? Yeah, I think it's like we all, in being allies, get to learn more too. So that's my little cheers to our project and cheers to Juneteenth today. Okay, any other brunch notes before we move on? Are you guys, have you um, had a drink or something delicious? Hmm. Marie is having a Hawaiian bagel. That's a frit of mine. Cindy's having a mocha and a lemon blueberry muffin. Delicious, I highly ap approve. That sounds very tort worthy. Okay, a mocha, French toast with vanilla almond extract and cinnamon. All right, that's a win. That would definitely be for its menu. Excellent. Okay, I'm so glad that you are all brunched up and ready for this. Good afternoon, Sheila. Thanks for being here. Before we get to our pages, the last pages, can you believe it? I have to tell you that I went back to look because I was curious. It felt like we've been doing this project for a while. We started this project on March 15th. We shut down here in Oregon on March 13th, and I spent two days going like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? What can I do? How can I try to use my social to share and connect with people? And I never anticipated, A, that this would happen, that we would create this community, we would write a story together, and that we would spend three months every week doing it. So I just can't even share my gratitude and thanks for being part of this with me. Um, 
So I want to quickly recap our votes for this week. This, I would say, was the hardest week yet for me because as I've talked about before, because this is a short, it came in, there we go, look at my fingers again. It came in at a whopping, oh, this one doesn't show because this is my next pages. I believe it came in at 62 pages. So a regular mystery is usually anywhere from 275 to 300 plus pages. So we're condensing that into 60 pages. So I've tried to wrap up as many loose ends as I can, but unfortunately just space and time. There may be some loose ends and I encourage you to use your imagination to think about what may have happened with those loose ends. But this week I put it out to you, you answered the call and we had so many amazing ways to wrap up our story collaboration. So let's review what the winning answers were. All right, here we go. Number one was where does Brady end up? He becomes the head chef at the Mary Windsor by one vote, one vote. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. <laughs> the other thing that I think comes through so much in this is the fact that as much as we all despise Richard Lord, clearly we all love to hate him. I know I mentioned that before, but it's true and these votes prove it. Okay, so Brady ends up becoming the chef at the Mary Windsor. Let's see if that happens in my pages. Okay, next question was, what ends up happening between Richard and Tony? He throws her out after she begs for forgiveness or he forgives her and um, Lance plays matchmaker. <laughs> Obviously, yet again, Richard has to boot Tony to the curb, which is fair. Even though he's horrible, does he deserve someone as awful as Tony? Probably not. All right, question number three was, what happens with the play? Richard originally wanted a special version of Taming of the Shrew, but obviously those plans went south with Peter's murder. So our options were that the play is canceled or that Rant, Lance, that Lance writes a special comedy just for Richard to cheer him up. And look at that. Obviously that was the clear winner. You love Richard and you love him. <laughs> okay, and last but not least was, why did Peter kill Hank's mother? Was it just purely an accident? He picked some poisonous herbs in his garden and he's not really a chef and he didn't know what he was doing or did he kill her to try to gain control of the Mary Windsor? Of course he did, of course he did. Okay, so that was our wrap up. <laughs> oh wait, we got back to just comment. Richard deserves someone worse than him. <laughs> I love it. Who knows what's in store for Richard? I have to tell you that I'm working on book 13 right now and I realized I'm just seeing it, it this last week or so and I realized Richard's not in it at all. I think because I've been so focused on our short that now I'm like, oh, I gotta go back and maybe add some Richard. <laughs> I love that we tried to cheer Richard up even though he's awful. I agree, that's awesome. Okay, so with those final results in mind, are you ready to finish? I'm going to be kind of sad at the end of this to finish our collaboration, A Brunch with Death. I know I am. So get those pastries, get your delicious coffees, your sparkling ciders, whatever it is. And let's do part 13, the wrap up of A Brunch with Death. Richard stood and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Good idea, Lance. I could use a drink. He snapped at a waiter. Bring us a vat of Bloody Marys and make them strong, like burn the back of your throat strong. Tony jumped from her seat. She reached for Richard. Baby, honey, you have to believe me. I had no idea, none. Richard shook free from her touch. He looked to me and Juliet as we stepped down from the stage. Again, I found myself in unfamiliar territory. Feeling sorry for Richard? I suggest that we don't let this delectable spread go to waste. I ushered Juliet toward the buffet table. Let's all gather around the table and break some bread together until the professor returns. Break bread together, Juliet whispered. That's laying it on thick, even for you, Lance. I shrugged, desperate times call for desperate measures. Everyone gathered at the table while Bloody Marys were passed around. I helped myself to a bacon cheddar scone. <clears throat> What's going on? I don't understand any of this. Brady voiced what I assumed most of us were already thinking. Hank killed Peter because 
Peter killed his mother? No one spoke. Brady turned in my direction. Don't look at me. The professor wrote the script. Juliet and I simply lended our talent. Richard gulped his drink. I think there's one person at this table who knows the truth. His bulging eyes focused like a laser on Tony. She fanned her face. You don't understand. That, that wasn't part of the plan. Aha! You admit it. There was a plan. He knocked back more of his cocktail. I thought about cautioning him to pace himself, but Tony let out a wailing sigh and stood up again. Listen, if nothing else, at least hear me out. Her voice was breathless, as if she was struggling to fight off tears. Maybe she was a better actor than I thought. Richard clutched his glass. No one's stopping you, at least not yet. Tony paced from one end of the table to the other. Okay, I admit it. I was helping Peter. He had a plan to skim some money from the kitchen. That's all, I swear. We worked together in Reno, and he successfully pulled off similar schemes. I caught him in the act when we were working at the same hotel, and he agreed to cut me in. We've made some decent money on the scheme. The plan this time was that I would distract you with the show and take your attention away from the kitchen. He used that area under the sink to stash the money in the receipts that he'd been fudging. You have to believe me, Richard. That was it. I never thought a few thousand bucks would be a big deal to a guy like you. Richard snarled. Tony massaged her temples with her in index fingers. No, seriously, that's all I was in for. But then things took a weird turn. We made a list of some potential targets, and Ashlyn made sense with the theater. But then Peter freaked out when we arrived in town. Now I realize that must have been because of Hank. He wanted to get out of here ASAP, but I refused. She stopped and stared at Richard. Because of you, I fell in love with you for real. Yeah, it was an act at the beginning, but that changed. I told Peter that the night he was killed. I told him that I was going to sign the prenuptial agreement and stay in Ashland with you. Prenup. I thought back to the fight that I'd witnessed between Peter and Tony. They had discussed getting something signed, but if memory served correctly, it was Peter, not Tony, who had, who had insisted on getting a document signed. As if reading my mind, Tony continued. You see, Peter wanted more time. He had his sights set bigger on this con. He said there was a loophole with the hotel that would allow him to gain ownership. If he could get Richard, you, to sign a fake document. I told him I was out. I was done. I had fallen in love and I didn't care about money anymore. I only cared about you. She batted her eyes at Richard. He slugged back the last of his Bloody Mary and reached for another. Before Tony could say more, the professor arrived. Excellent, you all are here. He took off a pair of reading glasses and tucked them into his breast pocket. I imagine you have some questions and I'll answer anything I can. I have a question, Brady said with a puzzled look on his face. How did the poison get in Peter's glass? I delivered the drinks myself. Ah, uh, yes. But remember, you found Hank in the kitchen, correct? Brady nodded. Hank had already poisoned Peter long before you brought out the champagne. They had an exchange in the kitchen. Hank knew that Peter would sneak in for a couple shots of whiskey in the late afternoon. He added the poison to the whiskey bottle, which my team recovered in the dumpster out back. Peter ingested the poison and was already feeling the effects of the toxin streaming through his bloodstream by the time everyone toasted with the champagne. Brady's shoulders relaxed. Oh, okay. I have a question. Juliet, Juliet raised her finger. How did you know about the deed in the hidden safety deposit box? The professor nodded. Yes, that's a valid question. You see, when we ran Peter's name and prints through the system, we returned quite a history. 
It seems that Peter's ties to Ashland run deep. His father used to own a number of properties throughout the plaza, which were purchased under less than ethical circumstances, including Hank's mother's tea shop. Peter's father ended up bankrupt due to excessive gambling debts, and Hank's mother was able to repurchase the property. Peter made it his mission to restore his family's legacy. What does that mean for the Mary Windsor? Richard scowled. You are the rightful owner. We've confirmed that with the bank. There's not much more I can say on this subject in the short term due to Hank's pending trial. Jules helped herself to another serving of the cinnamon roll French toast and then turned to me. Yeah, how do you know about the old bank vault in the basement of a rose by any other name? Moi? I pointed to my chest. Yeah. That's easy. I have a similar key in my office. We shot some spooky shorts for a Hamlet promo in the vault a few years ago. I kept the key as a souvenir. Tony, who was still on her feet, spoke up. Detective, I'm confused about Peter's past. He killed Hank's mom? Indeed. In his attempt to rebuild his father's real estate portfolio and his reputation, little did he know that Hank's mother's estate did not include ownership of the Mary Windsor or the old tea shop. She had already sold both off. Family feuds, avenged deaths, and secret estates, I interjected. This has all the makings of a modern-day Romeo and Juliet. Accepting the romance, the professor moved to the table for a cup of coffee. No, Tony screeched. There was romance, right, Richard? Do you believe me now? Richard folded his arms across his portly chest. Nope, and I want you off my property now. Tony threw her hands over her face and started to sob. Actually, I have some further questions for you, the professor said. Let's take a stroll to my office. They left, with Tony still begging Richard for a second chance. Who knew if she was telling the truth? But I had to give her credit for not breaking character. Richard leaned against the chair. Great. Now I'm out a show, a fiance, and a chef. He sounded so dejected, I couldn't help myself. I think we can help you out on at least a couple of those accounts. I nudged Juliet. She gave me a funny look. Richard, you have a budding young chef right here. Huh? Richard furrowed his brow. My God, the man was dense. I nodded my head toward Brady. The kid has mad kitchen skills, right, Juliet? Juliet smiled at Brady. Absolutely, he's a natural in the kitchen. And we're headed into the off season and he could use some extra hours, I added. Richard's chest puffed up slightly. Yeah, you interested? For sure, I mean, I have a lot to learn, but I would love a chance. Brady's cheeks were flushed with excitement. Juliet would certainly continue to mentor you, I said, bracing myself for a kick swift or for a swift kick in the shins. That would be awesome, Brady grinned. Tord is here anytime you need us, Juliet offered, narrowing her eyes at me. Think of it. He can be our inside man, I said in a hushed tone, as Richard and Brady started discussing details. Our secret spy. Juliet rolled her eyes and chuckled. Oh, Lance, what would I do without you? Richard stood. Well, sorry you wasted your time on the play. It would have been fun. Before you go, I have a thought on that too. As I mentioned, things are winding down and the company always enjoys creative projects during the off season. What do you say if I write something special just for the Mary Windsor? We'll put on the production here, brunch fet and all. For a moment, I thought Richard Lord might actually cry. Instead, he made his body wide and he pursed his lips. Yeah, yeah, that would be something. What kind of a play? I tried to contain my evil grin. 
Hmm, I have some ideas in mind. It will be a comedy with a shrewish female lead. I picture her with red hair and a shrill cackling laugh. I'll get back to you after I flesh this out with the rest of the company, but I can see the title now. By the pricking of my thumbs, something witty this way comes. Okay, there we have it. A Brunch with Death, our Bake Shop Mystery spin-off collaboration. Three months of plotting of your creative ideas and energy turned out into this amazing short. I'm so proud of this project and what we've accomplished together. I can't even believe it. I'm glad you enjoyed it, yay! I, I really like the ending too, Terry. I was saying to my husband, like, I wish I could actually write the play, but of course, no time for that. But um, yeah, it seems fitting. And as much as we loathe Richard, um, we, we feel a little bit of empathy for him, I think. And I also love the idea that if any of these spinoff characters work their way into an actual bake shop mystery at some point that um, Lance and Juliet could have a side within the Mary Windsor who's, you know, working double time for them. Mm. Patty agrees, an inside man. Yeah, yeah. Don't you sit? I love it. Uh, Jevive, let's see. She asks, do you have a group set up yet for future collaborations? No, I don't have that set up yet. So my plan is twofold. One, I'm going to figure out how to share this. This is definitely going to be shared in ebook form. And then I think some sort of like readable PDF for everyone. It will be free. The recipes that we all picked and voted on will be included in the back, just like a real bake shop mystery. So that's to come this way up time early July, because in a minute we're going to talk about what's coming next. Um, so that and then... I will be setting up, like I talked about, a private Facebook group for our next story collaboration. And my goal is to kick that off probably sometime mid to late July. This month time period work pretty well. Um, so if you all feel good about that, I think what we'll do is we'll start at the end of July and we'll work our way to October with the release of the fourth book in the Sloan Cross Mysteries. And then maybe we'll do some sort of, on, um, I don't know, another holiday little bake shop spinoff or something. Yay. Debbie, I'm so glad that um, everything felt like it was tied up for you. Um, I think I have them in re my recycling, but you should have seen my notes. I was like, okay, I got to try to go back and think of everything. I'm sure there are things that I missed and I apologize. And I think one of the things is I've been so overwhelmed by how did you all have become in these plots. So I tried my best. And if I didn't close any loop, work on it yourself. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, come to the virtual poison pen in July. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We can Zoom at the airport. That's the new uh, way we do it. I'm so glad you had fun. You would want a PDF um, so you could print it out. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, Joseph said he wants a PDF so he can print it out and have it with your bake shop collection. That's great. Um, I'm so excited. Okay, so shifting gears from our collaboration before we before we end let's just take a minute to cheer ourselves like congratulations we did it we wrote a book together in three months like that's amazing and it was such a positive happy distraction for me during this time of craziness and i hope that was true for you too so yay congratulations cheers to that Next up, I want to talk a little bit about what is going to happen with the next few weeks. Now that we've wrapped this up, I'm going to keep doing my Friday Lives. I have some really fun things in store for Friday Lives, special guests, um, there's lots to come. But uh, before we get to that, I have to tell you that I got a, something special in the mail yesterday. I got to turn to my handy assistant here. <laughs> okay, there's a box, this big box. Now you can't even see my face. This big box arrived. What do you think is inside? Any guesses? Any guesses? You want to see? Who's ready? Ah, which way do I go? <laughs> Nothing but trouble. It's real. They're here. There's a giant box of the next book. 
It's officially here. I'm so excited because for a while it was touch and go as to whether we might even have books because some of the printing presses were shut down. Yay, it's happening. This book comes out in just a couple weeks, so I'm shifting gears and my first live event with one of my favorite bookstores is going to be on Tuesday here on Facebook. It's at four o'clock live. I hope you'll join me. We're going to do a special pre-order event. So if you want personalized signed copies, this is your opportunity. If you do a pre-order, I will be signing them and sending them um, out through Vintage Books. We're also going to have all kinds of giveaways and swag and prizes. Vintage Books is the first bookstore that I ever did an event with. And um, I have some really funny tales from the early days of my career that I can't wait to share with everybody. So I hope you'll join me for that kickoff event. And then from there, we're gonna have a slew of other events. I'll share them out next week. They're all gonna be in this format, either live here, live on YouTube, and also on Instagram. I have some super cute book plates. Can you see those with the bunt skull and the beautiful bunt cake? And then I have a custom tort one. So I'll be sharing these at some of my bookstore events like the poison pen, murder by the book. I have fun stickers and coffee cups and anything you can imagine to share. So look for the whole schedule of events. And then I have a giant day of fun planned for release day, which is on June 30th. That is a week from next Tuesday. Joseph wants a signed book. Okay, yeah, you need a signed book. You need a signed book to add to your collection, right? I mean, everybody needs a signed book in their life. I think it's the way it should be. I covet my signed books, um, and I love that we can do stuff like book plates too for not being able to necessarily be at bookstores, which is normally where I would be signing. I'm gonna be signing all of those book plates like crazy this weekend and sending them out to bookstores. So they'll be there, but the book is here. I know I've talked about it before, but this particular book is so near and dear to my heart because it's different. It's a flashback. It's told through the lens of Juliet's father. And I really think, I hope, <laughs> that the takeaway for those of you who've been following along with the whole series is that this book is really going to bring everything that we know about Juliet sort of full circle and set her up for what's next for her and Ashlyn too. So I'm super excited to show you. Before we wrap up, does anybody have any last questions or thoughts about the process, about our collaboration, or just anything in general? Let's see. When you come to the DC area, okay, you, you got it. I always, I love it when I get to meet readers in real life for the first time. See, you know, if we've known each other in this way for a while, and people will be like, would you sign more than one? Of course. Like, yes, always. You know it. <clears throat> I would like to come to Tennessee, Tennessee, DC, New York. You know, the thing is I had a whole tour planned for this summer to come to the East Coast. We were gonna tie it into a pre-college tour for my son, but obviously that is off the table this year. So instead it'll be a lot of this and um, figuring out ways to get you um, signed copies. Western New York is a beautiful visit. I definitely, that will be on my agenda hopefully for this time of year. If uh, we're back to traveling, then that will be the plan. New Mexico, I gotta, I'll make a list at the end of this and I'll be like, okay, you all said you wanted me to come. I'll just show up at your front door. We'll have brunch. Is that cool? <laughs> Natalie asks if we can order signed books on your website. Um, sadly, no. The way it works in traditional publishing, because I'm published through um, a major publishing house, is that I can't sell the books myself as the author. That's all in my contract. So all of the books are sold through bookstores. Um, I do think what I'm going to try to put together is a collection of signed book plates, maybe. Um, that might be a few weeks out, but that maybe I could sign book plates and send those out to people. You can definitely get those through the bookstores though. And then there will be a variety of bookstores that will have actual physical signed copies like Vintage, like um, <clears throat> some of the stores in the region here that I can drive to safely. So I'll be sure that I share those here so that you guys can find copies there. Any other questions? Let's see. 
I'm so glad to have been with everybody in quarantine too. It's so great. Oh, any news about the writing course? Yes. Okay. Oh, somebody says you'll cook for me. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm in. I am. Rochelle, I was in uh, BC last spring because Left Coast Crime was in BC and I fell in love with the city. It is maybe the most beautiful city on the entire West Coast, I have to say. We loved it. And we toured UBC for my son. That's also a beautiful campus. So yeah. And um, the most exciting thing for me was when we were on the UBC campus, I went into the campus bookstore and what did they have? Copies of the Big Shot Mysteries. I couldn't believe it. So sweet. Um, <clears throat> hang on one second. Back to uh, the courses for a second. Those are, we are in the final editing stages. So the plan will be to hopefully share those as soon as we get through launch. So I will definitely be sharing out information soon, but I would anticipate sometime probably mid-July for those, if not sooner, but mid-July is probably a safe target, but I will keep you posted. Okay, so Tuesday at 4, Natalie asks, Tuesday at 4 is um, the first event that I'm having live with Vintage Books, but I have an entire lineup, so that will kind of kick things off, and then I have a full day on June 30th, on Tuesday, June 30th for release day. I'm, I'm doing this amazing partnership with the bros that bunt. We're doing, uh, they're doing five bunts and we have a big collective giveaway that we're going to be sharing. So I'll have information on that too. And I'm going to be interviewing them and we're going to talk about how they bunt together and the process of them creating special bunts. I've got trivia planned and then I have events for the next week with multiple bookstores in Texas and Arizona. In, um, up on the Oregon coast. So there will be lots of opportunities for you to join in. Oh, I'm excited that you're gonna try Sloan. So exciting. So Sloan Cross Mysteries have three books out so far, so far and the fourth book is coming out in October. So that's why I think our next spinoff would be a fun Sloan um, adventure. So I'm glad you're gonna get caught up. Sue, I'm excited that you're excited for Nothing But Trouble. I can't wait to share this book with you. It's funny because I wrote it so long ago, and so I'm already a couple books ahead, and when I got the copies yesterday, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right, like here it is, it's in the flesh, um, and there's, um, there's just a lot of um, depth, I think, in this one that's different, okay. Oh, that, that's awesome. You're like, give me everything that Ellie wrote. They're like, who are you? <laughs> who are you talking about? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's interesting because I think Sloan and Jules are very different, but I think they could be like sisters. Um, and they have some similarities, but to me, in my mind, they're completely different people. Yes. Is there an audio of, of what? Of... We can, I can think about that later, an audio. Oh, the audio book, okay. Some other, okay, mm. Mm. That's good to hear, good, excellent. Um, that's so funny, nothing but. <laughs> oh, is there an audio of nothing trouble? Uh, the audio usually comes out I don't know exactly when audio will come out with this because of quarantine and all the shutdown. Um, audio usually comes out, I would say, sometime like three to six months after the initial release. So the ebook and the paperback will be out on June 30th. One interesting like insider tidbit is that audiobooks during quarantine have really dropped off. And what the publishing houses suspect is because people weren't commuting. And so many people listen to audiobooks during their commute on a train, in the car. Um, so I find that fascinating. It'll be interesting if we see an uptick again soon once things kind of return back to people being in commuting positions again. Reba asks, in what year does Nothing But Trouble take place? So the book is going to take place in modern times. Juliet is going to find old journals that her father has written. And then we're going to go back to the early 1980s with Will, her father. And so then the whole perspective of the book is told through Will's lens and voice. Um, yeah, so yay. <clears throat> 
Oh, well, that's interesting. You've been listening to Hoopla nonstop. You know, I heard from another reader who said she's been listening to more audiobooks while we've been home um, because she'll just play them while cooking or doing dishes, laundry, projects around the house. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine the audiobooks are going to go away. Don't, I'm not saying that, but it's just interesting because I think it was like cement of book um, sales that the publishing house hadn't really thought of, you know? So, anyway... All right. Well, I think that wraps up our brunch today. Again, let me just reiterate, this has been such an amazing experience, not just in terms of a happy distraction, but also in never knowing where this was going to go. And the fact that as a group, we were able to pull it off um, just really does like give me goosebumps. I can't believe it. And now I'm so so excited to do it again. So I want you to start, those of you who've read the Sloan series, I want you to start thinking about who you would want in our Sloan spinoff. And those of you who are longtime Bake Shop fans, I want you to start thinking about another project like this, maybe later in the fall that we could do for the holidays. So that's the new two little spinoff projects that'll be coming up soon. And then I hope to see you here next Tuesday for my vintage books talk. And then next Friday, we'll do a live again. Um, and I'm not sure what that content's gonna be, but I'll tell you sometimes next, sometime next week. We'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> With that, have a great weekend and happy reading. Bye.